Welcome to Charts Today, my name is David Linton and today's edition for Monday the 27th of January comes to you from London and we start by looking at uh, the dollar. The dollar continuing to just move, we see there last uh, last week was another stronger week, remembering this is my long term, my medium term and my short term picture. The daily, weekly, daily and 60 minute chart and the daily chart just poking through on the dollar so we're starting to see that improvement, 98.40 is, is the cloud resistance there for that but the short term trend is looking good we've turned a corner there and we are seeing that dollar strength returning and there's quite a lot of uncertainty with a uh, coronavirus virus at the moment in China and that is just having an impact and there's a bit of a flight to quality and the dollar is normally a beneficiary of that if we look at the euro dollar we're seeing euro dollar weaker against that stronger dollar breaking down to medium term bearish again so the dollar strength continuing to um, dominate uh, the dollar is falling against the yen, however, and the yen is the ultimate safe haven. And so we are just seeing um, that uh, the yen is rising quite strongly on that um, on, the, on the fears of what's going on in China. Uh, and if we look at sterling, <coughs> sterling hovering around the 131 level. Uh, it's fairly much in lockstep against the dollar at the moment. Uh, against the euro, it's stronger as well. We're seeing uh, there that the trend is bullish on all three time frames. And against the Swiss franc, uh, even there, sterling is holding up reasonably well. Um, and against the Aussie dollar, much the same. Bitcoin uh, is up 0.2%. It's at eight and a half thousand dollars. It's starting to look more and more bullish on all three time frames here. So the picture is looking quite good there. Uh, if we look at uh, the U.S. markets uh, on Friday. Friday, the S&P was down um, just under 1%. We haven't had a 1% uh, down day for quite a while on the um, S&P now, but uh, this morning's futures do suggest we might see that now. The NASDAQ also was uh, down on Friday. We see here on the 60-minute chart that just showing through. And the Dow... <coughs> also was down half percent on Friday as well, deteriorating. And the Russell 2000, still not hitting new highs, of course, has turned back to short-term bearish. But the key thing is where the futures are pointing, and the S&P future is down 1.2%. That's a big fall uh, for the future at this stage of the day. So, it, And we're seeing the NASDAQ E-mini down 1.5%. So almost certainly we're going to see US markets opening sharply down. And that's having an impact um, in, in other markets, of course. We're seeing the FTSE down over 2% this morning. Uh, so this coronavirus really starting to impact here. And uh, we're seeing just that sell-off. Uh, we didn't, of course, make new highs on the FTSE 100. So um, that that's uh, still a, a struggle. And the mid caps were seeing much the same uh, falling away there. They did make new highs uh, on the longer term chart, <coughs> but now falling away to medium term bearish, down 1.7%. Interestingly, not down as much as the uh, FTSE 100 blue chips, which have a greater um, international exposure. Uh, <coughs> the DAX in Germany down 1.75%. The CAC Courant, uh down nearly 2%, it turning more bearish there as well, clearly. Uh, Japan was down 1.6%. Stronger yen will not help uh, matters there. The Hang Seng uh, was uh, also down. And if we look at the Chinese composite, of course, the key thing here is we're in Chinese New Year. And um, this market... Uh, is currently closed. So we saw the big fall off before the Chinese New Year last week on Thursday. Um, expect to see this market fall further um, when we see the markets open. Of course, a lot is going to be dependent on how the news develops over the coming uh, days for Chinese New Year. The um, Indian market was down 1%, so looking a little bit more bearish short term. The medium and long term picture still looking pretty good. And the Aussie market was closed today for Australia Day, so uh, Australia Day on Sunday. Um, so we uh, haven't seen any um, price updates there. The big moves are in crude oil. Brent crude down over 3% this morning. Uh, that's really interesting because normally the Q1 is quite strong for Brent. We see here we've had some quite big down weeks um, so far this year. Uh, we had the, the the run on the Middle Eastern crisis and then just we've fallen away. And this cor coronavirus uh, problem having a real big impact there um, because Chinese demand now is expected to be way down as a result. And WTI also lower. Brent crude below the $60 mark. WTI now nudging for $50. 
US Nat Gas, we put out a report to clients last week on Nat Gas, uh, just nudging that 195 level. Uh, so we've had a flaw there on Nat Gas. We need to make sure that floor isn't broken, but the trend is very, very clearly down on the longer term charts. And if we look at uh, uh, some of the other products here, gold, of course, is going to um, be a big beneficiary of this uh, uh, uncertainty. And we're only up 0.8% on gold, but that is taking us back to the territory we saw nudging back towards this $1,600 or at $1,582. So we're bullish on gold on all three time frames and still these lots of upside targets to play for. And these new columns here will produce new upside targets. So that's going to be really interesting as well. Silver also up nearly just 1%. So that's looking quite bullish as well. And uh, US 10-year yields um, have fallen quite dramatically over the last couple of weeks. And we're seeing that fall away there, that recovery failing in bond yields. And that's really significant. We're down to 1.62% um, on the bond yield. So um, outlook for US interest rates is starting to look um, more bearish. And that is having an impact on the bond prices. We're seeing here German bond, the bond, actually the bond future now recovering. Uh, so that's starting to look quite strong again. Uh, taking a look at the individual stocks now. Um, we start by looking at the Dow on Friday. Um, there weren't many performers up. Intel up, up a massive 8%. Uh, we put out a report on the Dow stocks last week. Intel was one of our top 10 stocks, and that jumped 10% uh, straight away. Amex was also one of our top 10, and that was up. And P Procter & Gamble. So we've seen some quite good performances there um, amongst those stocks on, on uh, the Dow. The NASDAQ, again, was quite a mixed picture. Uh, Intel leading the, uh, the fly there. And then on the downside, uh, we had quite a lot of stocks to the downside. Side, so uh, quite significant there um, <coughs> if we look across the picture there um, and if we look at uh, the Aussie market of course it was closed overnight the nifty 50 we had dr. Reddy's laboratories they're up 5.6 percent this data by the way coming from Thomson Reuters uh, sorry the uh, this data coming from Yahoo Finance so um, free data source really good uh, data here uh, and then if we look at the uh, the downside uh, we had Vedanta down four and a half percent Quite a lot of industrials, Tata Steel, Vedanta, um, down. This fears this kind of virus and, uh, and Chinese demand really starting to weigh on quite a lot of these uh, international stocks. Uh, in the UK, uh, in the UK now we're looking here to um, the FTSE 100. NMC Health uh, is the best performer, up 1.4%. Um, but the chart not got looking great. On the downside, uh, we've got some really big falls here. Uh, IAG down uh, 6%. They're really falling away. Burberry Group, a lot of stocks with exposure to Asia really falling quite heavily. Here we see the live updates coming in from Yahoo Finance. Uh, looking at the 250 now, um, we've got Fidelity China. They're down 6%, of course. No surprises there. They've been affected. Um, and if we look at uh, some of the other stocks, uh, Fimba PLC is the best performer, up 7% this morning, but not enough to really change the chart picture there. Taking a look at uh, Europe, we haven't got many stocks up, just probably just the three. Intesa Sao Paulo, uh, the banking stock, uh, we, they're up uh, in um, uh, Italy. We've got uh, SAP up and Iberdrola, but on the downside, we've got some very, very big falls. We've got Kering down 3.8%. Uh, LMVH, of course, more exposure to the Asian market, uh, Daimler, Lind, lots of these stocks down 3%. So we are seeing some quite big falls for the market today. That's it for today. Until next time, happy charting. See you then.